Hello, happy February, happy video every day month for this month and for next month. As of when I'm filming this, my Greece, my first cover video of the year went out two days ago, I think, three days ago. And it went out really late on Saturday night. They always go out really late on Saturday night because of Shabbat. And I think in the morning when I checked it at like nine or 10 in the morning, literally it had been just the night. It had something like 190 views, which blew my mind, absolutely insane. So that was exciting. But anyway, that's not what we're here to chat about. We're here to chat about our February, no, our January favorites. <laughs> I've got quite a lot. This month, I've done a lot of sort of just chilling. And chilling often involves reading or listening to books, watching movies and TV shows, exploring places, etc. Not much of the latter though. So let's just jump right into it. We've got five movies to begin with. First of all, I finally saw Barbie. I think it was right at the start of the year I watched it. And to be honest, I wasn't really desperate to watch it when it first came out, but I did want to avoid spoilers and it was really hard to avoid spoilers. Of course, this is like the most spoken movie of all time, basically. Maybe not quite, but it, there's a lot of social media presence about it. But I really enjoyed it. It wasn't anything like what I was expecting, but I thought it was very, very good. Next, a Disney one, Elemental. I really thought this one was very sweet. I liked it. Next, we made our way through Marvel, which you'll also see in the TV shows. And the first one of the movies that we watched was Werewolf by Night, which is kind of like a short film. I think it was an hour long. And it was really cool. I really liked it. When it started, I wasn't so sure if I was going to like it. And then it kept going and I was like, oh, I actually really like this. Next, the first one of this list that I actually saw in the cinema, which is One Life. And it's a beautiful story, very moving, very heartbreaking, but also warm. I can't explain it, but it was very good. And finally, another Marvel, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I'd been putting off watching this one for some reason. I just wasn't really, I don't think I liked the original Black Panther that much. And I also knew it was gonna be really sad, but eventually I bit the bullet and watched it. And it was actually less sad than I was expecting and more funny than I was expecting. And I was able to follow the plot a little bit more than some of the other Marvel stuff because I get very confused a lot of the time. So yeah, I enjoyed it. On to TV shows, we've got seven, quite a lot. First of all, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Now, I don't know if it was before my YouTube time or if it was during my YouTube time, but I was absolutely obsessed with Percy Jackson when I was a teenager. I can't remember exactly what age is. It was probably around age 12, 13 and onwards. It was definitely before the first movie came out. When was that? 2010. Was it really earlier than that? I'm not so sure anymore. Time doesn't mean anything to me. Anyway, I was a big fan of the books, the movies, the movies. I don't think I need to say anything about. And when I heard that they were making a TV show and Rick Riordan was going to be really involved, actually, I think I've learned it's pronounced Riordan, Ry Riordan, I don't know. I always thought it was Riordan, but then I was watching interviews and stuff and it sounds like I'm saying it wrong. Anyway, he was going to be involved the author and, you know, it was going to be a bit more diverse and it was going to be more, you know, to the books. And it was going to be on Disney Plus. I was so, so excited. I couldn't quite believe it, to be honest. And it wasn't until it was actually on my Disney Plus screen that I finally believed it. And they come out weekly and I've been waiting for them patiently every week. And it's been so good. I've really enjoyed it. I just watched the last one last night, actually. Or was it today? I don't know. So yeah, big fan of that. Hope it gets renewed. Would love to play a part in it if it ever films in England or Australia. Anyway, I enjoyed it. Next, we have a TV show that my grandma from Holland introduced to me, recommended to me, and it's a Dutch program and it's called Stars on Stage. And basically they have, I think they start off with maybe eight or so relatively famous Dutch people. To be honest, I didn't know most of them, if any, but within the current Dutch sphere, they seem to be quite popular, but none of them work in the musical industry. Some are singers, but some have nothing to do with singing and they basically undergo training for musical songs and perform and get judged and get given advice and whatnot. And if you know me, you'll know that I love musicals. And what I love about it so much is that they really show that it's not easy to be in musical theatre. People make it look easy occasionally, but it's not. And I've just found it really interesting. And one of like the main Dutch producers is one of the judges. And it's so interesting to hear what he has to say, because obviously maybe one day I'll audition for him, hopefully. But just in general, it's it's I'm really enjoying it. And it's so nice to see musical theatre sort of starting to bloom in Holland. It's really becoming a bigger thing. And that's making me really excited. 
I'm talking too much. Right, now we've got a lot of Marvel, so I'll go through them quickly. Moon Knight, which I can't even remember. Miss Marvel, which I really enjoyed. She-Hulk, which I also really enjoyed. This one, I'd heard so many bad things about it and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, but actually I loved it. It was one of my favorites. Daredevil, which we've been watching a lot of, and Jessica Jones. Onto books, we've also got five actually. That's surprising to me. First of all, The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. This book was fantastic. It's a historical fiction about World War II and I love historical fictions. And this was about the people who worked in Bletchley Park, I think it was called. And you could almost say it was based off a true story. It's not, but it seems like it could be. Basically, these women were employed to secretly decode things from the Enigma, I think. I can't remember much. But I love World War II books, as you might have noticed from my previous book reviews and stuff. And I love historical fictions, as I said. And this book was so well written. And I was just so immersed in it. It was so good. Anyway, next, The Double Trouble Society by Carrie Hope Fletcher. I knew that Carrie Hope Fletcher had released a children's book or maybe even a second one by now. I knew she was going to. And of course, it didn't really interest me. I like Carrie Hope Fletcher, but I didn't need to read a children's book. And then I was thinking, I think this was around the time that my flight was really delayed. I don't think you know about that yet, but you'll find out about it in a future vlog. And I was like, I just want something light and easy that I don't need to think about. And I like Halloween books and it's really hard for me to find Halloween books I find. So if you have any recommendations, I know we're far from Halloween, but please let me know down below. But yeah, I read it and I thought it was very good. I mean, unbelievably predictable, but it is a kid's book. And if I were ever to have to sort of read a book to a child, I would not mind reading this one. I think it's very nicely written and it's a good story. It's nice. It's yeah, it's good. Next, Emma by Jane Austen. And what I didn't realise when I chose this was that I don't think it's the actual book. It was a BBC dramatisation. I don't know what I just said, but we're going to pretend I said it right. <laughs> and I really didn't like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is favourite. So anyway, actually, I'll come back to that. I liked the content. I liked what I think would have been the story, but I didn't love the production version. It's been a while now. I can't even remember exactly why it annoyed me, but I know I struggled just listening to it. It wasn't a pleasant listening experience. And what I do remember vividly is that there were scenes where it was meant to be sort of, you know, people speaking at a party or whatever, and they're having a conversation, but obviously there's chatter in the background. So they put chatter in the background, but it made it really hard, first of all, to be able to tell who was speaking and who you needed to be focusing on. And more than that, I kept having to pause it and take my earphones out because I thought it was people around me who were chatting to me. It was just very frustrating. <laughs> now I'm really confused because I'm looking at my list and there's a book I read and unless it was February, but I don't think it was. It's not on my list. Whilst I look for this, I'll tell you about the next book, which was The Secret of Platform 13. This book was recommended to me years ago. I think it was by Carrie, but I can't remember. Might have just been by a friend. And it was basically advertised as if you like Harry Potter, you should read this book. And just based off the name, you know, The Secret of Platform 13, it kind of sounded like that. And for years, it's been on my to-read list. And again, this is more meant, I think, as a kid's book or a young adult book. It's definitely not meant for my age demographic. But again, I was like, right, I'll just read it just to get it off my to-read list because it's been on there for so long. I found the book. I'm now just trying to see, sorry. Yes, no, it was definitely a January book. So I don't know exactly where it fits in, but anyway. But The Secret of Platform 13, I read it as an ebook, So actually flicking the pages and reading it rather than listening. But I really enjoyed it. It was sweet. Again, unbelievably predictable, but it's a kid's book. And it was nice. It was just good. I enjoyed it a lot. Very creative. The next book, which I don't know, I don't know where it falls, but for some reason it wasn't on my list, is Secrets by Leslie Pierce. I think I've read another book by Leslie Pierce last year, maybe. I don't know. But this book was phenomenal. So good. I listened to it as an audiobook and it's 17 hours long. So definitely on the longer side. And the amount of times I thought it was the end. I don't think I realized when I started it that it was 17 hours long. Or maybe I did. I don't know. But it got to the end of maybe the second hour or so. And I was like, right, this sounds like we kind of wrap it up here. It sounds like the story has happened. And it could have ended there. And then it didn't and it went on. But in a good way, I enjoyed it. I was glad it went on. But I just didn't know what they were going to do because it felt like it was resolved. And then another thing happened and again, it was resolved. And again, you were like, oh, okay, this is the end now. And then it wasn't the end. And that happened quite a few times throughout the book. But as I say, I quite enjoyed it. It was such a well-written book. So interesting, so clever, so good. I was just, I really, really enjoyed it. That was probably my top book of the month, I would say. I just 
oh, I thought it was so, so good. So I don't know why it's not in my favorites, but anyway, Secrets by Leslie Pierce, highly recommend. And then finally, I went for one nonfiction because I had to, I didn't have to, but I chose to. And this was a short one. So I thought, right, we'll just bite the bullet and do it. And it was called Ask and You Will Succeed by Kenneth D. Foster. It said something like ask a thousand questions. I don't know. I didn't like this book very much. I think I need to stop picking self-help books for myself. I'm sure for other people, they will be very useful. And I'm sure this book is very useful for other people, but I find them annoying. And I think it's because I've always already been very self-aware, like even as a child. So I knew I was, I was already analyzing my life and I, I can't explain it. But like all these questions he was asking, I was like, I've asked these a hundred times, a thousand times. I don't know. I just, it was, it was grating on me. And there was also a little bit of God thrown in there, which I have my own thoughts and views about. And I just felt, I don't know, it wasn't, it didn't make me happy. And the other thing, as I say, this was an audio book. And after every single chapter, not even chapter, every single like bit subheading, I don't know. It said something like, if you want to find out more, go to so-and-so website. I think the phrase was something like, if you want more information and advice, go to blah, blah, blah. But it was obviously one recording that they copied for every bit and it was so repetitive. And this is a silly thing. He placed the emphasis on the and, and it was like, for more information and support, go to, or I can't remember. It was just, it felt really unnatural and it was so frequent and it really grated on me. So I don't want to say I don't recommend this book because maybe for some people it is useful and maybe it is just my own fault for trying to pick a book that is self-help oriented. But this felt very much along similar lines of think and you will succeed. Is that what it was called? Think before it's too late. I would still say that one was even worse because that one was much more me, 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 I'm the best. Whereas this one was more, I don't know, I can't explain it, but it wasn't working for me. So yeah, that's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Moving on to musicals. Now, obviously I loved all of these. How many are there? Five. My first one is a maybe, actually. So I lied. It's not, I loved all of these, but I rewatched Annie this month from Star Kid. Not Annie as in tomorrow, tomorrow, but Annie as in Star Kid. And it's always been, I think, my least favorite Star Kid, but I still love Star Kid, so, you know. Then I finally listened to the full cast recording of Wonderland and had the plot there with it to try and sort of follow the story. And it was so different. I knew some of the songs individually and I sort of vaguely had an idea of the plot, I thought, but it was so different to what I was expecting. And I watched also some video clips of like, I think broadway.com or something had them. I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. It was, I mean, I love, I love most adaptations of Alice in Wonderland and I loved the music already. I did know that, but it was just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Then Firebringer, which is another Star Kid one, which I have seen loads of times before and still really enjoyed. And then there are two that I saw live in London. Ah, lucky me. <laughs> the first one of which was Moulin Rouge. And I loved it, such fun. It was a very spur of the moment decision for me to go. There will be a vlog going up about it where I also talk more about the show, I think. And the second one, on the same day, I went to see Guys and Dolls. Now, as you may recall, I was in Guys and Dolls back in 2016, I think. I think during my first Valet year. And when I was in it, I didn't actually love it. I enjoyed being in it, of course, but as a musical, I was like, this isn't a great musical. And so I didn't really have much interest in going, but my grandma really wanted to go and she doesn't like musicals. So I was like, right, well, I guess we'll go. And because she paid for the tickets, we had very good seats and it was such a good show. It was such fun, so cleverly done. I just, I, if you're in London, I would definitely recommend it. All right, we're still not done. We've got a couple more things for food, first of all. There is a restaurant in Germany called L'Osteria and it's like an Italian restaurant. We went to the one in Frankfurt, but I have a feeling that they're more common sort of throughout Germany. I think it's a chain. The size of the pizzas are insane. Absolutely insane. I can't even sort of, maybe I have a picture of me holding my pizza. I don't know if I have one, I'll insert it. And considering the size, they were totally reasonably priced and they were really tasty. So that was a success. Next, I've got two actual physical things. Number one are these Tim Tams. They're Murray Salt River something or other, salted caramel. Tim Tams are an Australian biscuit, which I love. And they have all sorts. And I used to always have the double chocolate one and the caramel one and 
recently. I think they introduced a mint one, which I really liked. I think I've spoken about all of these in my favorites before. But this is a new one that my mum brought, I think, when she came in October. And I had asked for caramel because I like the caramel one. And she brought me this one, which was something a bit different. And I'm not usually a huge fan of salted caramel, but these are so good. They're very sweet, of course, but they are very good. So that was a really nice surprise. And then the second thing is when I finally came back here, I found my bag of goodies from things that I'd bought when I was in Holland back in May. And one of those things I found, which I demolished in literally about a week, were these Rotella. They're like these licorice, you can see there's one left and I kept it just for this video. They're like these licorice wheels, they're so good. And it used to be really hard to find them vegetarian and now a lot of them are. There's still not all of them, but this one was so very good, so good. And now I'm gonna eat that one after I finish this clip. Next for fashion, I've got two things, but actually before I talk about those two things, I love the outfit I've put together today. It was totally just because all my clothes are in the wash, but it's making me very happy. I won't show you, but I'm just very happy about it. So the first thing I have, which I've definitely spoken about on this channel many times before, I'm sure, is my neutral lipstick. It's by Rimmel and it's color 220 Heather Shimmer is what it says. And it actually says moisture renew, which makes a lot of sense because I always feel like it's very moisturizing. That's all I've got left of it. And I'm very sad because it's lasted me many, many years. I think I've had this since before my YouTube channel. And it's just the perfect neutral color for me. As I say, it does feel a bit moisturizing. It's easy to apply. It doesn't go all over. It doesn't go on my teeth. It stays on for a long time. It's lasted a long time. I'm gonna be very sad when I have to say goodbye to this. And then the second fashion-y thing, which again, I don't think you would have seen yet, but you will see in future vlogs, are these Winnie the Pooh slippers, which I got as a Christmas gift from my friend's parents. And they are so soft, they fit me well, which is very rare for slippers or shoes in general. And they're Winnie the Pooh and they just make me very happy. And the last thing I have is under the travel category, which is Kalem, the airline. And I wrote this down after I had quite an experience with them and they handled it mostly very well, mostly. But there's one thing I'm still waiting to hear from them about and it's gonna depend a little bit on how much hassle they give me if I'm still gonna think of them as a favorite next month. But anyway, I've, I was very happy to fly with them. For my song of the month, I've got the song Just The Way I Am, I think it's called, and I've written down Rolling Paddies, Rumbling Paddies maybe? I went to Ireland to visit my friend who was in a local pantomime and I went to the pantomime and they had this song in the pantomime. And for some reason it just got stuck in my head. Like there were loads of other songs in the pantomime, but I would go home singing this song. And it was nice. And the boy who sung it was a little boy. He was, I think about 12 years old and he had such a good voice and he sung it so well. And it was just a pleasure to listen to him. But then on one of the nights that I was there, they had the actual original band come on stage as well. I can't remember what they're called. Tumbling patties, rumbling, I don't know. So I got to meet the actual singers and apparently they're huge in Ireland. And oh my goodness, I've never heard an audience clap so loudly because no one knew that they were coming. It was a surprise. So yeah, that's my song of the month. Half an hour later, we've gone through all our favorites. Thank you for sticking around if you've made it this far. Now, what you might notice is I think I've changed the name. I've, I think I've not called it January favorites. And the reason why I've done that is because whilst this month it was mostly favorites, although as I said, there was that one book that I really wouldn't, wouldn't really consider a favorite. But I want this more to be sort of a monthly recap of what I consumed, I suppose, in a month. I know some people do it in their bullet journals. Maybe it's like my monthly review, I suppose, just of all the different things I've seen and experienced and whatnot. So I'm still thinking of the name as of when I'm filming this, but obviously it will have a name. But that's why I was a bit hesitant about the word favorites. I think it's gonna be reviews that I think makes the most sense. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you for sticking around. And as I said, at the moment, there are daily videos going up, vlogs during the weekdays, and then a singing cover on Saturdays, and then a regular video on Sundays. That is until the end of March. And then in April, we do have a few more other bits and bobs and, you know, we'll figure it out. So if you want to stick around for all that, you can subscribe if you want to, yay. Also something I don't think I've actually spoken about on this channel before, but something that I have done last month, as in January, is there is an option if you like what I do and want to support this channel, you can obviously subscribe, but also there is a link that says buy me a coffee or it might just say support my channel, I don't know. And you can choose to pay sort of, I think it's three pounds to me as like a way to support my channel because I don't have enough subscribers on YouTube to actually earn money off this. And I've been doing it for, I think eight years now, nine years. And I would like to make this sort of a part-time job. So that's a way 
that if you like what I'm doing and if you want to support me and my channel, you can do it there. But that's all from me. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching all this and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!